Hey guys, it's Joe of Wager Talk. Today I am joined by Dave Koken. We are going to be talking Mountain West Conference preview. Dave, let's start off with Air Force. Now, this is a team that went three and three in 2020 after having a ninth or sorry, 11 and two game in um, 2019. What are you hoping for this team? They're a mystery team to me because they've got a lot of new people in place. And, you know, last year wasn't great for Air Force. They had a lot of COVID issues early in the season. And uh, the offensive line was, was just a total crapshoot early on. The problem is I think the offensive line is still going to be a crapshoot. It's just There's just not a lot of experience there. And when you're running this type of an offense, you really need the offensive line to be functioning uh, as, as one co- cohesive unit. I, I have my doubts that they'll be ready to be proficient early in the season. So I think Air Force could be vulnerable early. Probably will get better as the season progresses. Calhoun's an excellent fo- football coach. But I don't think this is anything more than a middle-of-the-pack Mountain West team this year. I, I don't think it's going to be a great season for Air Force. Are you expecting to see a lot out of their tight end, Kyle Peterson? Well, I, look, he's strong. Uh, and he'll probably be the featured guy as far as uh, whatever passing game they implement is concerned. But for me, it's still the offensive line. I, I, I just had that as a big downgrade for them. And it's just the way I kind of look at football. If you don't have things going on properly in the trenches, especially the offensive side, your production is probably going to suffer. Okay, let's move on to Boise State. Now they are definitely a favorite to win, but they do have a hard non-conference schedule. What are you hoping for this team to be able to take the conference? I think they're clearly the best team in the conference. Um, The question is, do they get bored in conference? What's their motivation going to be uh, based on the results in those those non-conference games? I mean, they've got a huge game to start the season, and it could set the tone for how Boise approaches the rest of the season. If they come through that game uh, and and they're in good shape, you know, they could just steamroll this league because they are more talented than anybody else. But if their hopes for getting to the playoffs or getting to that major bowl at the end of the season get dashed quickly, you wonder if they could have flat spots during the season. But on paper, Boise's clearly the team to beat in the league. It's not to disparage any of the other programs in the conference. There's a few other teams in this Mountain West this year that are pretty good. But Boise on paper, uh, I have four different sets of power ratings that I use uh, in a variety of ways. And they're number one in the conference in all four. It's rare that you'll find a team that just sweeps the board on my power ratings, but they do. Absolutely. I can see that being the case. We saw them lead the conference last season in scoring. Let's move on to Colorado State. Now, looking at this team, they have a good defense. I've got question marks on the offensive side of the ball. What are you thinking for their offense and what can they do to improve? That's that's going to be a challenge for Adazio because the defense does look good, particularly the defensive line. Uh, this is a really good line. This, this is a defensive line that I think can stack up with a lot of good programs at the uh, more major conference level. So I think Colorado State's going to be okay defensively. Offensively, they've got 10 guys back, but it wasn't a great unit last year, and I just don't know how well they're going to throw the football. And, in, you know, in 2021, you're going to be able to throw the football some. Uh, the offensive line, question mark to me. So I don't see this as a really good season for Colorado State. They might make incremental progress, but I've got them in the bottom half of the league. Not as low as the very bottom teams, which I think we know who they are. But uh, Colorado State, I I don't think, has enough to crack the upper echelon of the Mountain West this season. Now, moving on to Fresno, you talked about offensive lines for Colorado. Fresno allowed 24 sacks last season. What's wrong with their offensive line? Why are they letting so many people break through here? I don't think you'll see that this season. Uh, No? This is a good team. No, I I think Fresno is going to be a serious contender in the conference this season. I think they're improved over last season. I've got them number three overall in the conference behind Boise and behind uh, Nevada. But I can clearly see them being the dark horse that steals this league. There's a couple of teams who are capable of getting in there and, and perhaps taking the whole thing. And I've got the Bulldogs in that category. Their offense is going to be really good. This, this is, it could be the best offense in the conference when all is said and done. If the defense steps up and plays a little better than it did last year, Fresno State's going to be a really dangerous team this season. 
Well, that's great for all Bulldog fans out there that they are on the verge of a big year. Um, let's move on to Hawaii. Now, when we look at this team, the defense did better last year than they've done since like 2014, allowing under 30 um, points per game. So what are you hoping for Hawaii? Do you think they're going to have another better season than they did last? Couple no, before. and I, yeah. I was kind of surprised they did as well as they did in a few games last year because I didn't think they were a very good football team. And I'll give credit to Graham and the players who stepped up and maybe they were catching teams on bad days. I think that happened a couple of times where teams just uh, the Nevada game stands out to me and Nevada just should have run all over them in the first half and just kept stepping on their own toes in that game or stubbing their toes in that game. And uh, so to me, Hawaii was the beneficiary of some bad performances by other teams last season, more than good performances on their side. I think realistically, they're a lower division uh, component in this league this year. I've got them ninth overall on my power ratings in the Mountain West, so I don't think it's going to be a good season for Colorado. They're going to have to make the most of their home field advantage when teams travel out there. It is definitely an advantage for Hawaii because it's a long trip. Uh, but I, I thought they got a little lucky last season. I don't think they'll get quite as lucky this time around. Absolutely. Now let's talk about Nevada. We've got the Wolf Pack here. I think they're one of the teams that could upset the conference and um, beat Boise. Now they went seven and two last year. They have a strong quarterback. He got set 27 touchdowns last season. What are you liking with Boise? Or sorry, yeah, I, I really uh, with Nevada. I, I really like yeah. this team. Uh, I think they're well coached. There are no real weaknesses on the team. They're pretty much average or or, or better than average. In fact, substantially better than average at basically every unit. Uh, if there's any fall off from Boise or if Nevada can, can find a way to win all their games, this is the team that I think can step up and maybe pull the upset in this conference and, and get the victory. Uh, they should clearly be a bowl team. And I would not rule out them being one of the teams that's in competition for that group of five bid at the end of the year. This should be a very good season for the Wolfpack. I like it, Dave. So we're moving on to UNLV. Now, this team went 0-6 last year. They were so inconsistent. We saw four different quarterbacks in the role. Can this team improve? I, I doubt it. Uh, I think it's a toss-up between them and New Mexico as to who's going to be the bottom of the league. Look, I, I live in Las Vegas. I always root for the Rebels to do well. But when you look at their roster, they just don't have the talent. Uh, almost anywhere. Uh, I, they're, they're, they're strong at receiver. They've got a good running back, but the quarterback position remains a liability for them. I don't think there's anybody who can step forward there. I don't have, uh, look, the QB power ratings that I have, I don't have anybody who's even average on the roster. And the defense still looks like it's going to be a sieve. I don't know if they're ever going to get better, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but it certainly won't be this year. I think if UNLV wins two, They'll be doing well. Absolutely. So hopefully Mexico can do a little bit. New Mexico can do a little bit better than them. They went two and five last year. They have picked up a solid quarterback. Do you have hopes for them winning you know, four games this season? No, not really. Uh, I think they did make incremental progress last year, but the roster was so awful last season that there was no place to go but up. And I still think that's that's kind of the way it is for the Lobos. They might be a little bit better than last year, but I think teams took it for granted last season at times, which was easy enough to do. And maybe they're not overlooked as much this season. I, I think it's between them and UNLV to see who finishes dead last in the conference. So moving on to San Diego State, Dave, they went four and four last season. We're looking at a team with a really strong ground game. Um, but can their offense improve because there was holes and weaknesses in it? I don't think the, and I don't think the ground game is going to be vintage San Diego State this year. And part of the reason for that is they just don't have anybody at quarterback that's scaring the opposition. And you started to see this last year where teams were keying on the run and saying, you know what, try and beat us through the air. We don't think you can do it. And you look at the end of the season, Aztecs a 500 team. They're not used to being in that neighborhood. But I think maybe they better get used to it. This is not the program we're used to seeing out of the Aztecs. I think there's a pretty good division between them and the top three in this conference. Uh, I've got San Diego State still as my fourth team overall. 
But that's kind of a shaky fourth. The team we talk about le- next could well jump over them. So I think the uh, the glory days for San Diego State are in the rearview mirror right now. Now And until they fix their skill position setup, I don't think it's going to get any better. You can't win with just defense and playing ultra-conservative football. And that's what the Aztecs have tried to do. you got to open it up more, and they just don't have the bodies to do it. Absolutely. So that brings us to San Jose State. Now they won the title last season. They've got a lot of departing players, though. Can they still yeah. challenge for it? They've got some. They've still got good people in place, and I love their defensive line. This is a, a an elite level defensive line. I, I'm talking all of college football, well, not the Mountain West. It's the best defensive line unit in the conference. Uh, the back seven, though, on defense, that's an area. That's of more concern, and I th- think they could have some problems against the better quarterbacks they face in this league. Uh, also, the days of San Jose State sneaking up on anybody, they're done. Now, they're not going to they are not gonna surprise anybody. Everybody's going to be game-planning seriously for the Spartans. So I expect maybe a little bit of regression this year. Not that they're going to be they're gonna fall off the map or anything like that, but I've only got them fourth in the conference overall this season. Fifth, I, I should say. Basically, in a tie for fourth with San, Jose, uh, San Diego State. So I think Maybe not quite as good as they were a season ago. I think there's a few teams that are just better than they are in this league. But they're still a representative team with a good chance to be playing in a bowl game at the end of the year. Absolutely. So that takes us to Utah State. Now, this team went 1-5 and five last year. We are welcoming in a new coach, Blake Anderson, to their team. Can he have a good year right off the bat with them? I think the hard times are going to continue for Utah State. This is just not a good football team. The good news for them is they're not New Mexico and they're not UNLV. So those are teams they're probably better than on paper. But I, I, when I look at, at this team, I don't see any real strengths. Maybe linebacker. Uh, the skill position setup looks really weak. It's it's very below average. Uh, I'm not sure about the coaching on this team. I think Utah State's behind the eight ball this season. Uh, again, I've got them ahead of only two teams, the Mountain West. Basically, no chance to be bowling at the end of the year. So moving on to Wyoming. This is a team that really needs to rebound this year. They had injuries to the quarterback position and running back position last year. Um, they've got a strong defense. Can they rebound and do better? They went 2-4 and four last season. They, they, they just have had so much trouble keeping a healthy quarterback on the field. And... I guess that has to be marked down as a concern going in. The defense is going to be fine. And Bowles is an excellent coach. But I just don't know where the production is going to come from on a regular basis. So I've got Wyoming kind of middle of the pack in the league. If the offense moves forward and it just gets a little better uh, in terms of being able to sustain drives, then the defense will take care of the rest. And Wyoming could end up being a sleeper in the Mountain West. But it's going to be a show-me situation. You're going to have to prove to me that you can stay healthy on offense and string together those solid time-consuming drives to give the defense a little bit of a rest. I mean, the defense, as good as it was, was on the field an awful lot last year. So I've got Wyoming as an upper-middle-of-the-pack team in the Mountain West, but I just am, uh, at this point, can't make them any higher than maybe fifth or sixth overall. Well, thank you, Dave, for doing the Mountain View, um, sorry, the Mountain West Conference with us. For all of Dave's best plays, make sure you check him out at wagertalk.com.